to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. You give the healing and grace that my heart always Oh, my heart always The average believer has not cultivated intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It is the reason why today our pain and everything that worries us goes to social media. Our pain and everything that worries us goes to people around because we have not known how to draw comfort from his presence those who really walk with god have known the value of his presence his presence is where we come and cry jesus when he was preparing to go to the cross he knew the burden of what was on him he went to the place of prayer and said father oh there is a place that we can cry there is a place where you can empty yourself most of where we are going to is the wrong place his presence where you can open up your heart and cry out your heart to the king of kings and the lord of lords some of you what god should do for you you are hoping friends will do it what god should do for you you are hoping social media will do it attracting sympathy from the whole world what you what god should do for you is what you think money would. listen let me tell you this the greatest of anything will fail you return back to his presence that is the place where you can cry and you know you are safe that is the place where you can roll before him and i'm not here to complain about my many struggles but by your spirit and your grace I'm confident you'll solve them But I'm here to say I love you I'm here to say I adore you I'm here to say From the bottom of my heart, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. From the bottom of my heart, yes, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Let me show you a lover's declaration. It says, Oh God, you are my God. Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. Give it to us, please, media. My soul thirsted for you. My flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Verse 2. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Verse 3. Because your loving kindness is better than life. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, 
Lord, we wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. Can I tell you this? For many of us, you know what is your God by how frequent you run to it. So the uncle that you are always disturbing for your lifting, listen carefully. You know who and what is your God by the frequency of your visitation. Hmm. Every five minutes you are on social media searching who will when he says come unto me all ye that are heavy laden afterwards you run from pillar to post ah. am i wasting your time return to him oh. you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are, you are God alone. You are God alone. From, From before, before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on. To love him above and beyond everything it says what shall separate us from the love of god what shall separate us from the love of god and he begins to list all kinds of things he say nay in all these things we are more than conquerors the bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it entered the heart of any man what god has in store not for prayer warriors not for fasting giants not for preachers not for eloquent people not for business people but for them that love him them that love him them that love him please hear me for someone God is calling you and he's saying I am still waiting where you left me five years ago I am still waiting man of God I'm still waiting where I was with you before invitation started coming I'm still there waiting patiently would you return back to me I am still waiting you cried and cried and cried and cried when you had no job I'm still waiting where you received your employment later Please take this as the voice of God tonight. Because if we don't pray for our generation, this level of lukewarmness we keep marketing and giving flimsy excuses is not about fanatism. It's about passion and desire. Don't care, don't tell me you are a preacher. Don't tell me you are a businessman, you are a deacon, you are an apostle. That is none of my business. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than this? Lovest thou me more than fame? Lovest thou me more than ministerial exploits? Lovest thou me more than ministry titles? Lovest thou me more than money? Can I tell you this? If you fail in everything in life, but not in loving Jesus, you did not fail. If you win in every other thing in life and fail in your love life, oh dear, you failed. You failed. Do you know why most of our children today do not love God? Because the depth of passion they see comes from their parents. And so if they see a father and a mother and leaders who are not serious about God, giving flimsy excuses, that becomes their templates too. When a child sees his father rolling before God every day, Lord, there is nothing I have and there is nothing I am except you. One day that child will come and roll with you too. Even if he does not know what you are doing. 
Listen, let me tell you, we may not understand what you are doing now till the next 10, 15 years. There will rise a generation that will not honor God. May God forbid it. I say it again. May God forbid it. Let it not be that it is in our lifetime we will see shrines return back to homes. Not just villages, oh, homes. Can I tell you this? For some of you, you need to suspend ministry activities for a while and go back to the altar. This, this deception of invitations and open door can dry you spiritually. Oh, I'm doing ministry. Exploits. I'm traveling from nation to nation. Isaiah was doing ministry when there was a call in heaven, who shall go for us? Whereas on earth there was ministry going on. All kinds of things. When people clap and say, Joshua Selman, you are busy, you go from place to place. I just smile and respectfully say, God bless you. When I return back with God, I say I reject deception. Oh God, I, your boy is here. From where you found me, may I ever remain there. Ministry nonsense. Right from the place of his presence, he can honor you to bless the nations. But see, Satan will give you ministry open doors a thousand times if it will cost you his presence. Oh, with Jesus' joy, he will open doors for you. Not every open door is anointed. I've told you this thing. There are doors you have to shut intentionally. Please return, return. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to someone. Return, return. I'm not condemning you, but return. God is saying, I am still waiting. Return to the place of the altar, the place of fire, the place of power. Return to the place of his presence. He called them that they would be with him and then represent him. I'd rather be called a failure as a man of God and yet succeed and win with God than to have the accolades of men across the nations and then you do not carry any weight with God. Someone pray right where you are. Father, grace to return. Please, someone pray. Pray. Grace to return. Grace to return. Grace to return, oh God. Mm. Pray one minute. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love. More power, more of you in my life. Please pray one minute. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More. More power, more of you in my life. In the name of Jesus. Question two. The second question we have to ask and answer tonight, and then we're done. What does it mean and what does it take to please God? Remember the first question. What does it mean and what does it take to walk with God? We said it means to love him and to prioritize him above and beyond anything this world can offer, including your own life. It means to get to a point and a state of total surrender. Now we are asking and attempting to answer the second question. What does it mean and what does it take to please God? John chapter 1 from verse 6 to 7 let me tell you what it means to please God there was a man sent from God whose name was John who sent him everybody please look up if I send you 
to go and do something for me what then becomes my joy is it not in your doing and fulfilling what i have sent you to do is that true when you return back to me and say sir i have done this in the parable of the talents matthew 26 don't turn there just write for reference the bible says he gave unto one five talents two and one and then he left the one with five went and did business and multiplied it to ten the one with two to four and when he returned he used a statement that showed he was pleased well done good and faithful servant is that true for the last one who did not do anything he was roaming around complaining and even buried his talent he says i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow so i thought instead of wasting this let me just bury it here is your talent and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant what does it take and what does it mean to please god let's finish the scripture john 1 6 there was a man sent from god that man was you and verse 7 the bible says the same came for a witness say witness to bear witness of the light that all men through his witness might believe right here i have taught you this is the corporate mandate of every believer it does not matter whether you are a businessman a man of god on the pulpit a politician captain of industry whatever it is our corporate mandate in this kingdom spiritual growth 101 you have once you know god and you want to understand his ways you must come to this and realize that our corporate mandate is the call to be witnesses a witness is the validator of god's claim there is no greater way to give god joy than to bear witness to the light it says that all men through that witness might be saved john chapter 4 and verse 34 john 4 34 jesus said unto them when he walked upon the earth my meat that means my satisfaction is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work is that in your bible when you read the prophecy of enoch in jude 1 from verse 14 jude was i mean enoch was calling his then generation to return back to the place of righteousness to return back to the place where they would acknowledge the god of heaven he called them and said beware he's coming with a cloud and he's coming to judge this and that and to call them back this was what john did john was that voice crying in the wilderness and calling the people to repent and for a long time he did it well except that bitterness and offense got into him and he veered off into something else and he paid for it by dying cheaply daniel chapter 12 and verse 3 daniel chapter 12 let's read it together please are you ready one to read and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever they that turn many not few to righteousness i can tell you what it takes to please god more than studying your bible more than just preaching when you are actively involved in being a witness and you use everything god has given you your beauty your talent your anointing every resource god has given you you use it to represent him and to lift up that banner of light and righteousness across the nations making your contribution towards kingdom come that is a life that pleases god that was the testimony of Enoch. The testimony of Enoch was not the accuracy of his prophecy. Unfortunately, these are the credentials we use today as men of God. These are the credentials we use today as business people. I am an accurate prophet. I am a great apostle. I am a wonderful pastor. Those things are wonderful. But if you covet the testimony of Enoch, 
the testimony of Enoch is not the life of a preacher. The testimony of Enoch is not the accuracy of a prophet. The testimony of Enoch is not a man who understands economic systems to amass so much wealth. The testimony of Enoch is a life that utilizes the time given and all the resources within your advantage to become the light. When you become the light indeed, you become one who pleases the father jesus had the same testimony as enoch he said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased please hear me believers may i recommend again to everyone and our global family watching please go back and listen to my birthday broadcast if you can listen to it please listen to it I thought on some things that I want you to listen to. It will help to align your mind even towards this season, to align with what God is doing. One of the things that I taught is the power of purpose. I said, nothing in itself is valuable and profitable until it is connected to purpose. Now, the challenge with the body of Christ is we teach spiritual truths in isolation to being a witness and in isolation to kingdom come any truth you teach in isolation to and with God's agenda becomes self-destructive even though it is the truth so if I teach you prosperity I teach you principles and believe me under this ministry you will learn everything when I'm teaching the series on prosperity I will teach it as if I don't teach any other thing else when I'm teaching on deliverance I will teach it I give my heart and my all because it is my job by God to see that you are holistically built but can I tell you nothing in itself profits you until it is connected to that agenda of being a witness and that agenda of kingdom come now you can learn about power because it is connected to your witness now you can learn about prosperity and not feel apologetic for it you can be reading a book on prosperity and you can confess i am a kingdom billionaire not from a carnal man's lustful communication but one who understands the role that that money will play in making you an effective witness and in making the kingdom come project a reality. Listen, I can summarize Christianity for you within a few sentences. The entire faith life is not complicated. Step one, Jesus and everything about him. The real journey for the believer starts with his encounter with Jesus. And that comes by hearing the message of the gospel that saves. And then at the point of salvation, you are now introduced to the personality of the Holy Spirit alongside the word of God. Your journey into the kingdom experience now begins. At your encounter with the Holy Spirit and the word of God, then you are given the privilege of being connected to human vessels who will now work in partnership with the word and the spirit to begin that job of methodical mentorship and growth in your life when you get to a point where you are gaining understanding and that mentorship has to be methodical teaching you the truths of the kingdom line upon line precept upon precept you get to a point where you attain a stage of commendable maturity now you are taught not only who you are and your rights we now introduce the kingdom concept to let you know that god has a responsibility over you the purpose for all the blessings the long life is that you are able to be an effective witness can i tell you only when you know your assignment as a witness and you understand the purpose behind everything God gives you, now your prayer and your wanting things will make sense. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I will never be poor. I agree with you, but to what end? I came from a background, I've suffered. I want to enjoy my life before I die. That is not a wise man's approach. I desire this wealth because based on the blueprint of the mandates given to me, I understand that kingdom financing has a, an, a major role to play 
in kingdom come and since God has called me to play that role with Jesus joy and he will send you resources beyond your wildest imagination because there is purpose connected to it please hear me believers we have to repent and manage our blind passion for things that are not connected to God's divine program it will always lead us to destruction hallelujah before he said give us this day our daily bread the prayer before it is thy kingdom come and thy will be done it is with respect to the kingdom he says give us our daily bread it is with respect to the kingdom that he said forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us it is with respect to the kingdom that he says lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil everything was connected to our being a witness and Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God how did he please God by becoming a light to his generation a beacon that can draw men to righteousness can I tell you you must spend your life making an active contribution with your life and your resources whether as a preacher as a whatever it is the geography of your witness I would always teach everything you have within you must work together to see Jesus glorified to see Jesus revealed this is true until and unless you get to that point believe me you may be a believer but you are not pleasing the Lord apostle how about the offering I gave the other time before your offering becomes acceptable we will have to vet what motivated it if it's just transaction because you are giving and you were told that money will come back well you may just get God to honor you mercifully because you are doing your best with what you know but that you understand that my life should count as far as being a witness is concerned you don't have to be behind the pulpit to be a witness our school of ministry students have invited us to come for their program and we'll come and watch them teach us what it means to be witnesses everybody say I am a witness one more time prophesied say I am a witness that means I am a validator of the claims of God yes as a man of God you are beyond a preacher you are a witness the testimony of Enoch I made up my mind that at the end of my life is if Christ tarries I sincerely don't want to be known just for being a great preacher a miracle worker great leader thank God for all of these things but if there is any testimony I covet in my life it is this right here the testimony of Enoch and Joshua Selman walked with God and he had a testimony that he pleased God if all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold and I will tell it to my world Jesus is more than gold if all I do is Jesus I've got something more than gold I will tell it to my world Jesus is more than gold we used to sing a song before I pledge allegiance to the Don't sing it if you don't believe it. With all my heart, with all I am, I will see to honor His coming. I pledge allegiance to the land some of you these are the songs you sang when you got born again these are the songs you sang when you were serious with God before something else came to distract you you've had my message please return he's still waiting you see the beautiful thing with Jesus is that for as long as you are ready to return his arms are wide open to receive you again 
the prodigal son said how many hired servants does my father have and i am here feeding with the swine he says i will arise and i will go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants the bible says as he got up and was moving while he was afar off he saw his father and the father came and embraced him and kissed him put that garment of royalty upon him and restored the signet ring hmm. this is not about fanatism this is not about irrational pursuit that brings imbalance and destroys every area of your life this is reordering your life in a way that makes you excel holistically there are many people who in a bid to show that they love Jesus Christ, they become so fanatic in an imbalanced way that their life overall looks miserable. It is not an attractive template of a witness. Can I tell you, you will never give him all and become a non-entity. He will reorder your life and make sure the other things you have left for him will return to you with honor and with dignity. My life is a testimony. Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, you never let me go. My shepherd king, you're watching over me. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Jesus Christ, you never let me go. My shepherd king, you're watching over me. Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. Listen, beloved people. I brought you this message from the throne there are many testimonies you desire in your life like the testimony of a celebrity nothing wrong with it the testimony of an entrepreneur who started from nothing and became the greatest voice within his territory noble testimony the testimony of a great and responsible father noble testimony the testimony of a diligent person who push through all the limitations to become great noble testimony the testimony of one who fought his way from idolatry to encounter Jesus noble testimony but tonight's teaching is a call to embrace the noblest testimony that anyone can have it is called the testimony of Enoch and Enoch the seventh man from creation from Adam walked with God and he had this testimony hebrews 11 and verse 5 that he pleased god that's it as busy as we are if all that we are doing is not pleasing god i assure you we are wasting our time and wasting the gift of time god gave us you notice i've been singing a particular song i will sing it one more time again Please allow me sing it worship team you listen to me this one is a message not a special number as i sing it i want you to listen when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i do my best to live for truth did i live my life for you lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious joy in married clay 
turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life Lord, your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious jewel in married clay, turning sinners into saints. Yesu one more time about you Jesus and all this is for you it's for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are God and I surrender. I'll sing it one more time and we'll pray. It's all about you, Jesus. And all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God, and I surrender. We're going to pray, but without wasting time, let me make the altar call right away. Right away. I don't know what else to tell you. If you are here, and on hearing everything I have said, you know that you need Jesus whether in the main auditorium, all the overflows outside following online. There's no point cajoling and plaguing with your psychology. This is an issue of life and death. There has to be somebody here saying, I covet the testimony of Enoch. That I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babu Wani Kamaraka. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babu Wani Kamaraka. Hey, Babu Wani Kamaraka. Please keep 
coming. Hear me. You will search and search all the earth. You will search and search over the earth, and you will find that Babu Wani Kamara. We have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babu Wani Kamara. Babu Wani Kamara. Please, if you are coming, I like you to run like there's fire on the mountain. Come and stand before Jesus. Finally, I found the key to peace. I found the key to grace. Whether you are a man of God, whether you are a businessman, it does not matter. Come to Jesus. He's calling you. Apostle, I remember giving my life to Jesus, but things have gone haywire. Can I come? Please join them. Join them quickly. We have searched and searched all the earth. Searched and searched all the earth. And we have found that listen let me tell you the truth an altar call you see an altar is a place of transference and exchange an altar is also a place of authorization so when you come to the altar you are coming to the place where your weaknesses and your limitations are exchanged for his strength it says let us therefore come boldly boldly to the throne of grace please if you are coming rush i'm about to pray now you cannot imagine how it gladdens my heart when i see people run to jesus it is not because i'm a preacher believe me this pleases the father and enoch walked with god if Enoch were a preacher in our days, he would cry like John the Baptist in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. He may, Enoch has been translated, but God has kept some of us, me and you, to continue that ministry. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Please lift your right hand high above your head, unashamedly. You are standing before the lover of your soul. Men can condemn you, men can talk about you. But here you are in the presence of one who loved you and gave himself for you. I don't care what you have done or not done. I don't care what has worked or not worked. When you come to Jesus, you come as you are. And then you trust his saving power. Please say this after me loud and clear from the depth of your heart. You are talking to Jesus who is in our midst here. Those outside, all the overflows. Please make sure you pray this from the depth of your heart. And for someone who might be watching by way of television or internet, and you may be in your room, your office, you're sitting on your sofa, and you are saying, can Jesus meet me at that point? Yes, sir. Where can we hide from his presence? So as I lead God's people to pray, make sure you pray and let it be from the depth of your heart. Lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I desire to love you. I desire to walk with you. And I desire to please you. Right now, I repent of my sins. And I confess that Jesus is my Savior. The one who died for me. Jesus is my Lord. And Jesus is my King. I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, 
I declare that I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb I declare that I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name keep your hands lifted and I pray for you father thank you it is always a joy to watch people come before the cross and Lord you have drawn these ones even by your spirit I declare by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven and in the name of Jesus the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life from tonight you walk in the newness of life I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus you go forward ever and backward never for in Jesus name we pray for in Jesus name we pray amen and amen now very quickly let me encourage you please I'd like you to move to my right there are counselors waving their hands to lovingly receive you have a word for you and then you quickly return back to your seat let's honor them as they go very quickly let's honor them as they go hallelujah is that the best you can do koinonia hallelujah please rise up on your feet and let's pray we always end our teaching sessions with a moment and a time of prayer hallelujah we have just two or three prayer points tonight and then we're done for this service prayer point number one take over take over I have come to the end of myself Take over, Jehovah, I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have touched the end of myself. Father, I lay aside every weight and the sin that does easily beset me and i run with perseverance the race that is set before me looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of my faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame please lift your voice and pray father everything that has stolen your place in my life let there be that reordering reordering be exalted be exalted be lifted above fame above ministry above my pursuit for resources someone is praying be lifted be lifted be lifted i exalt you someone is praying i came to church tonight and i have been taught that there is a nobler pursuit to walk with God and to please God captured in the testimony of Enoch I desire to walk with you I desire to love you I desire to serve you if someone pray I lay aside every weight the sin that does easily beset me inside outside are you praying hallelujah hallelujah when Isaiah saw the Lord he was broken and even though he was a great prophet he cried and he said woe is me I am undone I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the lamb upon the throne who reigns forever 
That was Isaiah's prayer. Prayer point number two. Lord, whatever it takes to walk with you throughout my lifetime, make it available for me. Be engracing. Someone pray. Please help those under the anointing. Someone pray. Whatever it will take, the resources, the consecration, the passion, the drive, the discipline, I obtain in the name of Jesus Christ. I obtain in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Final prayer point. Hebrews 11 and verse 5. One of the patriarchs that the Bible says we should follow. He was translated so that he would not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his transition translation he had this testimony that he pleased God someone pray let my life capture the testimony of Enoch that I am a father pleaser I am a God pleaser not just a God chaser not just a God worshiper I am a God pleaser that my entire life will be a witness someone pray my life will be a beacon of light even in this dark world a light in business a light in ministry a light to the nations that gentiles will come to my light and even their kings to the brightness of my rising someone pray whatever it takes to be a god pleaser prosperity health influence grace speed restoration testimonies whatever it would take for my life to please the father results i obtain in the name of jesus hallelujah Must I go an empty hand? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one so with which to greet him. Must I empty handed go? We used to sing these hymns in the seminary. It didn't make sense to us those days. The hymn was too long. We wanted them to cut the stanza first and last so we'll go and eat. But now we can discern the richness that is in that. To bring joy. That you will stand before Jesus having spent your life. And you will watch many people around you. Pastor, you will watch many people, businessmen. And they will say, I am alive that was changed thank you for giving to the lord i am so glad you came there was a ministry sent from god the name was koinonia the same came to bear witness of the light not to build empires not to exalt a man in the name of geo or president or whatever it is sent from god to spend our life let me remind you whether you like it or not someday i will keep saying it till it enters your spirit this life will be wrapped up and rolled like a curtain whether we like it or not he says teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom for some of you God is calling you to fade away a life of foolishness and time wastage it's time to begin to walk circumspect as wise and not as unwise redeeming the time because in truth the days are evil may it be that when he comes or when we meet him that we will truly truly stand tall and proud not just that we gave our lives to him but we spent our lives being witnesses 
Till he returns or calls me home Here in the love of Christ One more time Till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ, I say. I release grace upon you to love the Lord. May you desire him from the depth of my heart. The Lord who has shown me mercy and helped me to know him and love him. May that passion rest upon you. The grace to love him beyond any material thing in this life receive that grace right now the grace to walk with him receive that grace the grace to live for him receive that grace the grace to be an effective witness receive that grace the grace to please him receive that grace for in the name of jesus christ we pray Give Jesus a big hand clap. Give him a big hand clap. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for your patience. Just two very important announcements and we're done for the service. Number one, this is to announce that the Department of Protocol and Logistics, our gentlemen here, those who are responsible for the logistics of the ministry is open now for all all those who are interested skilled and gifted in this area please you can go outside the PR desk outside and then you can register your name and you'll be communicated duly I'm told that the application closes on 10th of July so for all of you who have been looking for a chance to serve in the house of the Lord and especially the protocol department here is your chance the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ and then next Sunday we'll be waiting upon the Lord um, you can break your fast before you come that's fine but wait upon the Lord and um, on Sunday in the morning the prayer request the prayer focus will be posted please make sure that you follow our social media platforms Koinonia Global and then you can get the prayer point and then pray if you fast till midday or three four it will not kill you this is for your spiritual discipline are we together you don't always fast when there is emergency this is part of our spiritual growth routine so we are waiting upon the Lord a global family discipline yourself and trust God for grace and the Lord will do us good in Jesus name after the grace do well to greet one or two people before you leave please rise and let's share the grace May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercies will follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching